the way OPA is structured is hierarchically. We get the hierarchy of objectives from metaphysics to epistemology to ethics, politics, and of course aesthetics. And within each one of those branches, the presentation is hierarchical. Right? There's a logic to it. For example, in epistemology, we start with the senses, the validity of the senses, the theory of concept formation, the concept of objectivity, and of course, leading up to reason. If we look at the ethics, we start with the nature of man, and then we go to the good, virtue, and the payoff, the moral purpose of life, happiness. So the book is structured based on the hierarchy. But at no point are any of these concepts kind of floating abstractions. I've seen, I've seen uh, objectivists, maybe it's been a long time since I've seen one of these, yeah, present these, try to do these graphs and charts and, and arrows and all these concepts, as, as, and they're completely floating, not attached to anything. But at every point in the book, Dr. Peacock brings in relevant facts, the concretes, to prove and to validate the particular point, we always have a reference to reality. We're never left with an abstraction or tied to everything else. And of course, we know that to validate, we must reduce the reality. Leonard Ayn Rand teaches us that in Introduction to Objective Epistemology, and Leonard reinforces that in OPA. We need to reduce to reality, but then we need to integrate with the rest of our knowledge. And OPA, the ideas are constantly being integrated. Every new point is integrated with all the previous points. So for example, take the chapter on capitalism towards the end of OPA. Okay. I mean, capitalism obviously, sometimes, often, is presented as a standalone kind of unit. You know, we talk about politics, economics, and kind of standalone but not in OPA. It rests completely on a theory of government, on a, moral, on a morality of egoism, on an objective epistemology, and on a primacy of existence. Indeed, capitalism is a system of a privacy of existence. And primacy of existence leads inevitably to capitalism. And that's what Leonard shows us in OPA if you think about the subtitles under capitalism. Capitalism is the only moral social system. Capitalism is a system of objectivity. Opposition to capitalism is dependent on, what would you say, altruism, bad economics, you know, Keynes. What is it in OPA? as a bad epistemology. Opposition to capitalism is dependent on a bad epistemology. Now, it's enough to read those subtitles of the chapter on capitalism to know that we are not libertarians. <laughs> they wouldn't even understand what we're talking about. And the chapter on moral social system, Lenin not only shows the dependence of the ideas of capitalism and freedom on a particular view of morality. But then he shows how capitalism, the system of freedom, reinforces all those moral, value, moral values and virtues. Then indeed, to practice the virtues fully, one must be free. One must live under capitalism. And he goes through every single one of the virtues and shows what it means to be independent under freedom versus to struggle to be independent when force is exerted upon you by the mixed economy or the statists. And he does this for every single one of the virtues. Capitalism is a system of objectivity, covers the objectivity of values. And why? Capitalism is consistent with Rand's theory of concept formation. Why it's consistent with the idea of objectivity. 
Indeed, everything in OPA is integrated around the core of Ayn Rand's philosophy, which is her epistemology. Everything is there to show how a theory of concepts gives rise to this entire philosophy. And Lenin has a whole chapter on objectivity. After all, <laughs> this is the philosophy of objectivism. And yet, Rand didn't write much about objectivity. There's not much in the corpus on objectivity. So a lot of the material in this chapter is new. It's what Leonard got from Ayn Rand directly. And think about the subheading. I mean, I love this subheading. It's probably my favorite in the entire book. Um, in, the, in the chapter on objectivity. This is the objectivity. What is objectivity, right? Objectivity as volitional adherence to reality by the method of logic. Objectivity as volitional adherence to reality by the method of logic. Think about how much is compressed into that sentence. We've got volition. Free will is essential to objectivity and therefore essential to everything about our philosophy. Volition is at the core, the heart of everything. Nothing is meaningful without it. But it's not any, anything. It's not whim, in a sense. It's volition as adherence to reality. You've got what? What axiom? You've got the primacy of existence. Reality is what we must adhere to. And by what method? Well, by the method of reason, by the method of logic. The unique cognitive tool that human beings have. So in one sentence, in not even a sentence, a, a, a subheading, he conveys so much and so much integration, so much of the, of the heart of the philosophy, the metaphysics and epistemology on which everything else is built is conveyed just then. Of course, then there's a whole chapter that articulates the case, that explains it, that concretizes it, that integrates it. So this new understanding of obje objectivity, which is new to Ayn Rand, is presented to us in OPA, I think really for the first time as a whole, as a unit, as something I think we can all start to understand. She shows that this new concept informs her entire philosophy. And if you look at the sub-chapters that come afterwards, if you look at how he ties this back. So here I'm just going to read you some of the sub-chapters from later chapters. Notice the reference to epistemology and metaphysics. Right? Values as objective. Independence as a primary orientation to reality. Honesty is the rejection of unreality. Primacy of existence. Sex is metaphysical. Statism is the politics of unreason. Capitalism is a system of objectivity. Opposition to capitalism is dependent on bad epistemology. We've covered these. Art is the concretization of metaphysics. And aesthetics, aesthetic value as objective. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making an appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.